Hello everyone. Hi. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining this uh, this session. Uh, we just arrived from, from Montreal um, to present how we actually build a static website using Gatsby and of course WordPress. So It's, it's going to be a workshop format um, about a headless WordPress and what we, it's going to be a presentation about what we used. It will be pretty intense, I can tell you just before, like there is a lot of things that we'll go through. So we'll try to go one step at a time, as clear as possible, outline the main steps. Um, but yeah, we'll be busy for the next one and a half hour, for sure. So, first, we will give you a quick introduction about Headless uh, and the tool that we use, Gatsby GS. Uh, and then, we will jump into uh, a demo presentation. And you will be able to follow us if you want on your laptop. We'll have a GitHub, we'll have a full tutorial, and we, we will present each step together, but you can do it on your own too. Okay? So, quickly about us. Ben? So, hi, um, my name is Benjamin. Um, I'm a front end developer. Um, I work with the WordPress since more, a bit more than uh, five years. And uh, as you can see, uh, I'm a very well lover. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm Michael. And Project, project me, project manager. It's been 10 years that I've been working with WordPress. Uh, I'm from Belgium, so obviously a waffle, waffle lover and waffle maker. <laughs> Side note, today is the National uh, Belgian Day. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, a tiny game just to keep you away during this long one and a half hour journey. We have some more glass of wine and glass of beer hidden in the slides. No cats today for us, but beer glasses and wine glasses hidden. You can try to find them along the way. So then we'll quickly talk about also what we do every day at work. Uh, so we work a lot with WordPress mainly and uh, we almost a little bit more than 50 websites. And we have different types of clients, like uh, foods, heads, uh, every type of clients, yes. And we do almost everything what they want. And um, we do everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we are very excited about new technology. That's why we try every time to discover something. And that's why uh, we try Gatsby, GraphQL, and the at the same time. So, yeah. Yeah, and the reason why we present this, uh, what we do and what is the context, because because of the business that we do, which is communication, PR, um, public relations, we have a big focus on, of course, the user experience, but also on the content managers and, and the editors, because there is a lot of updates, and it has to be easy for like for most of the people who use who use WordPress and, and CMS, of course. But this focus is one of the reasons why we start looking into the headless to see how we can actually expand the offer that we currently have in WordPress. So, okay, like uh, we we'll build a static website and, and using React, but what is this headless WordPress thing? Like, what about you? Like, have you heard about it? Headless WordPress? If you raise your hand just to set the room. Okay, and have you tried to build a headless? Okay, and have you used a headless WordPress in production for a client? Okay, cool. Um, so maybe we can start with why is this headless quickly? As you may know, like if, when you go with a traditional WordPress, you have your server or your hosting provider. 
and then your WordPress CMS. You will have your plugins, you will have your key, and everything is together in in and in the PHP. It's all together. And then the clients, using their phone, using their, their browser, their laptop, will browse your website. So it's all together. The difference, the main difference with the headless, you still have a CNS, you still have WordPress, of course, but we don't necessarily, you, we might use plugins, but we don't necessarily use a thing to display the front end of the website. We will use the REST API this bridge that will allow us to pull the content from WordPress like the post, the page, the navigation, the widgets and make them available to a standalone application it can, be, it can be a JavaScript application, in our case that's what we will do it can be a smartwatch, it can be a Google Home or no brand, ok, like a smart speaker um, it can be a lot of things, and the baseline is you will extend what you have in WordPress to other technologies based on that. So that's why we, that's the main difference on the front end, mostly. So you will you think like, why? Why would you use such a thing? Like I have my WordPress, maybe WordPress.com, create my website, my content, I have a beautiful thing, why? And even, even more today with Gutenberg, like, I can do pretty much anything. Well, yeah, we have reasons, and not just because it's trendy, but also because a good reason is security. What we'll do today together is build a static website. So we have dynamic content in WordPress, and we'll generate static content. So, just a HTML file with some CSS, everything static. So security, you have no data. You don't have a connection, you don't have a bridge between the data from your user, from your planes, on your page. We separate the concepts. Um, performance. What we will generate at the end of this workshop is just a few pieces of HTML, like I said, CSS, and we will ship them into a serverless um, platform. So you can also, and that's what we did for one of our websites, drop the website and the CDN and it's available super fast and scalable. Also, um, there is more and more options in the market today to build this headless uh, option. And the final point, maybe a really important one of course, is the cost. So it's a really lean infrastructure. Like we said, you can have your WordPress as a backend. You build your static website on your machine, on your own laptop, and you ship it to something that is free or not expensive. And it's really flexible. Like the cost would be really flexible since the infrastructure is flexible. So I try to make it fast <laughs> because we just wanted to talk to you super quickly about how it went for us. We started diving into Headless and JavaScript technology, I would say, one to two years ago in the, in the agency. Um, of course, we started exploring the options, what technology can we, can we use. At some point, we had to make a decision, which is the tough part if you start looking into JavaScript and Headless, because there are so many options today out there, like, it's endless. So we decided to go with WordPress of course and Gatsby JavaScript. We will dive into Gatsby after. Um, also Mateo CSS for the frontend and Google Cloud as a hosting provider. So based on that, we did some testing, staging, try to pull as much content as we can from WordPress and see if we can actually build a production website with this app. Which took quite a long time, I would say like 6 months, 12 months maybe. And uh, up and down, like it wasn't easy, like long journey, but mainly because of the ramp up and the technical ramp up. So, but good glass of wine and good glass of beer always help. So finally, we, we made it, and we have this uh, production website had less Google Cloud, Gatsby, and everything, and we have upcoming projects in progress as a headless. So. Okay, so what we will do today is uh, 
we are back for the workshop. We will start with uh, setup WordPress, then setup Gatsby. Finally, play with GraphQL to retrieve data from uh, WordPress and display the front end, the front end with TRGS. So, okay. So, this is what we will start with. So, and then, then WordPress and me. We have four articles, and the goal of today is to add this page at the end. So, uh, React post page. Basically. Just, just a side note quickly. Like we will do, we'll just try to put together the post, uh, the, the post of the admin. But if you go into the GitHub that we will present you today, you have much more details. You can actually recreate your full website with navigation, widgets, and everything. But for today, because we don't have much time, we'll go straight to the post and list this post in the static website. Okay, that's good, but how are you going to do that? So, very simple. We will start with WordPress at the beginning. And the good thing is we don't have to set up anything. We will provide you on your app a link. Then we will set up get, uh, get in. Finally, I can set play with GraphQL to choose data and display everything with React. And, like Michael said, we will push our website uh, to search. So, uh, so uh, yeah, so, so uh, well, first step has uh, will be the one, like, what is the base to start? Uh, well, we, we suggest to, if you follow the, the, what we will do, we suggest you to have Chrome and uh, an ID like VS Code. You can choose whatever you want, like if, you're, if you follow on your laptop, keep your, your usual tools, but just to have the same base uh, and the same environment all together. Then, if it's like Google install Node.js, and npm and also git which are the main requirement to, to start and to install Gatsby and, and all the other tools that we use today. So these are the first steps. And, and um, again we don't have a lot of time. We will have to go through a lot of, a lot of different steps. Um, if you have if you want to follow us on your laptop but at some point you have an issue, technical blocker, like a path issue, network, internet so so like drop everything and you can follow us after each step. Yeah, so after each step that we have here, we will take a break and recap together. So if you drop the ball at some point, no worries, everything is in the GitHub and you can catch up between the steps. Okay? So let's do it. Okay. <laughs> so you, you have the link here to the data. Yes, Olivia. So, so if you can not read it, it's uh, rebrandly. R e b r n a n t dot l i <laughs> slash w p dash Gatsby dash guide. You got it? Everyone is okay? So this is a link to the, the GitHub tutorial that we prepared for this, uh, this presentation. Of course, it's, it's the first time that we present and that we will do all together this tutorial. So if you have any comment, any question, we can discuss that at the end. And uh, yeah, feel free to let us know. So I won't answer Chrome and yes, code because I am already using them and after them. So yeah, we, we will have to answer about GS and NPM. And uh, yeah, maybe uh, if you want to do it, just uh, do it now and we will take like five minutes to do that. Yeah, this step should probably take five minutes if you want to follow. So we will, we will do every step on the screen.
already gotten a uh, um, <coughs> site like this up and going with the WordPress back in and etc. Yeah. So the stuff is not yes. So you yeah, so yeah. Okay, so let's use the uh, LTS version. You can just download it. This is probably the less funny and exciting part. <laughs> 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 okay, so you can check if you uh, are not in by doing not much speed. This printing on your terminal. Can, oh. can you see? Is it is it big enough? Yeah. yeah? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And if you don't have a terminal, I am using a uh, Inter2, but with VS Code there is a built-in terminal inside, so you can use it as well. Yeah. So if you are using VS Code, here you have a tab with terminal, with terminal, and you can do it. So we have no NPM installed. Oh, you, uh, you will have to install it to if I need to the same time. So you just you can just uh, try by using this command git to see if you have him on your laptop because you will need to download the okay. So also about the the GitHub. Um, you have the minimum comments that you have to do and then you also have extras in all sections if you want to go further into something if there is something that you want to dive into you have this extra icon in each step so just click on it it's a uh, accordion and you will have extra details okay uh, in this case for the requirement to be suggested NPM, the node version manager, which is pretty useful sometimes, but it's really up to you. Okay, so, uh, Everyone is okay for now? Okay, that's good. Cool. So, if we are all set with the, the requirements, so a browser, ID, Node.js, NPM, and Git is minimal requirement. I guess we can move to the next big step, which is WordPress. And the good news about this one is, there is nothing to do. <laughs> we, will, we will share with you a link that we could run. It's a, it's a sandbox. So we will pull the content from this link, which is going to be, well, if you have to get it, but it's uh, wcpboston.eelab.space, but it's in the GitHub. It's a uh, yeah, really straight WordPress 5 website. If yeah, yeah, like we also have images, it's Gutenberg based also. And uh, that's it, it's going to be the, the base for the, the API. So, that's good. Yeah. So, next, uh, we will set up Gatsby. So, first, we have to understand uh, Gatsby CLI in order to use. Uh, get the 
Uh, then we will create a page, we will learn how to create a page with Gatsby and uh, add an external plugin like Gatsby source WordPress. This one is used to link your Gatsby with WordPress in order to be able to improve your data. And there's a bonus, but it's, it's only if we have time for us to use that later. So, good now. Let's go back to the GitHub and start Gatsby. So, the only thing you need to do is this command line. So, to install the Gatsby CLI, you need to do it with this tag dash in order to be acceptable on your So, let's do this. I'm sure you can hold the mic and type. No, no, that's the trick. Okay, so. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Okay, 
this uh, should be done, so you can move to this uh, directory up, and, and you have to install the display dependencies by doing npm install. So this one is, is reading the package to JSON and uh, just downloading all the dependencies that you need to run your website. Okay, and finally you just need to do SP develop in order to run the server development server. So what? So yeah, this one is very important. So if you don't do that, you can try to realize that your website. So yeah. And uh, so, so when you, when you do this command, the Gatsby develop. Gatsby will actually run its own uh, sample locally, like Node will do it. And uh, that's what will allow you to actually browse your website on your machine. And when you click on the local host, called 8000. So what we did quickly, we installed Gatsby CLI. We uh, uh, it, was, it was too fast. <laughs> uh, yeah, we talked a little bit about those for the and five, but inside the SRC folder, you have you will have three folders. For um, that, the component one is where you put all your relevant elements. Features, plots, everything. Image, and page is where you create all your templates. So we will play on inside the front component. So okay, but so inside this folder, the SRC folder and pages. Every time you put a JavaScript file, uh, Gatsby will automatically create a page for you with path and everything. So let's do it. Just go uh, move inside the SRC slash page folder. And we will create a page name post.js. So, are you all okay? Do you have any questions so far? Good. Okay. So, um, when you when you Start with the get this starter, we will have already three pages, so the four or four pages. The index will be your home page and the second page, page two. So let's create another page. First, touch yes. Because Gatsby has to reload everything to be able to see this new plugin, so that's why we just stop 
this uh, Fania servo to implement the plugin. Okay, so you will have to uh, pass a few configuration for this project, for from this plugin, sorry. So let's go to the next one. Yeah, you, every time you, have, you want to install a plugin, you have to pass um, inside this uh, file that we config. And if you take a look, it's basically covered. Yes, it's so here is where you can install and add all your plugins. Gatsby already had a few plugins for you. Like plugin React and Mad, Transform Marshall, plugin Char. So if you want to add a new plugin, just copy paste the other object from the plugin. And this is where you put your WordPress URL link. So you can use this one for the moment, but later if you want, you can use your own WordPress. And you can say that, okay, HTTPS or HTTP. And there is a few configurations, like for example, if you want to use ACF, you, are, you need to set this to true, otherwise you, will, you won't be able to pull the, your uh, data from yeah. ACF. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's it, so just save, and restart your server. Mm -hmm. So it has been developed. So this is this is a really good step because you see here on that Gatsby's own content from the WordPress that we have as a, as an example. So you have text in the means, blogs, media, everything is fetched at that moment. So that's how we have all the data in Gatsby and then be able to go to the next step which is use this data and display this data. So yeah you can see the difference between the before we can start the plugin, so you, there wasn't any WordPress data, and now but we have everything here. And also the, the number of posts, so you can quickly see if there is something wrong, because you see, let's say, four posts. If you have 200 posts on your website, you know that something is wrong with the API, or if you are trying to fetch, let's say, the navigation the API menu and you have zero, you know that something is wrong too. So when you build you can quickly see if everything is good with the data. Okay, so let's go back to the website. Okay. So now we we need Gatsby and WordPress, but that's good, cool, but we need now to retrieve the first contents. So let's go back to here. So what we need, yes. Inside Gatsby, we create a page and we have the plugin in a lot of things, both of them. Which means that we are all set to finally work with WordPress in this Gatsby thing. And, uh, so, in order to pull data from WordPress, we will use GraphQL with a query application for the API. And it's very good because you need for us, so you, you ask for what you need and you get exactly what you want. So, it's very, very good, very fast, very, very. Uh, it's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> it's, it's magnifique. It's magnifique, yeah. And, and if you saw the talk from Etienne yesterday about GraphQL, he can talk to you about this technology much more than us. Within the room. Okay, so... Yeah, so we So, basically, when you start your server with Gatsby, you, you provide you two links. So the, one, the first one for your website, and the second one and this is where you can test all your GraphQL query and I will think try to retrieve your data, how it works. So let's take a look at that. You don't need me, it's okay. <laughs> okay. So yeah, here. Uh, okay. So for example, if you want all posts from WordPress you need to start by like, type all and there is an auto completion that if you don't know what you are looking for you can just like a look and check for example we want posts so we want posts okay yeah 
And if you click on the play button, it will do the magic for you. So we see the form posts that are the wrong and link that we saw when we built the website. So all is good. Okay, but well, ID was okay, but we want like the content title, so just press those are the name of the fields. Here, you put all of your fields here. So I'll say title, then content. <coughs> and content. We have everything we want. Like title, content, and all from posts. So yeah, and if you want, you can do the same for pages, for example. So instead of post, you will page. Same. It's, 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 it's very fast. Yeah, very yeah if, if you don't know what's the name of what, because here we know that title is title, content is content, but it's, it follows the, the structure that you have in the REST API, the WordPress REST API. So if you want to retrieve all another kind of information, you can check the REST API and you will have the information copy. Yeah, um, yeah, and also GraphQL is, is making pages and a different level of content. And the very short inside this tool is sheet space for Mac and the uh, uh, it's uh, uh, no, the control is the space bar and it will open the uh, uh, yeah, what, 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 is, what data are available. And what fields? So there is a lot. Okay, so now we have the one to get out. So we can pull all that information. Okay. So yeah, we just did a quick tour about GraphQL, but now we are able to. Oh. Sorry, I may have missed something. Is there, like, which work? How did you get GraphQL out of WordPress? Was there a plugin that you guys already set up? No, that's the that's the job from Gatsby. So Gatsby has GraphQL as a client and is translating the the answer from the REST API, the WordPress REST API, into something that is visible to GraphQL. It seems that there is there is probably other ways, like there are other ways to do that. I think there is no plugin GraphQL um, um, Graf WordPress, which is really cool. And um, yeah, might be, might be another option. Like there's probably a lot of different options, like with Apollo, with GraphQL WordPress, with a different stack. So in, in one case here, yeah, that's Gatsby and, uh, and this uh, WordPress plugin is just asking for the REST API endpoint and it's doing the job for us. The performance for us is wasn't a concern because we'll generate the website as a static website so we don't have we don't need like continuous scroll back. So performance wasn't a focus for us. But maybe with GraphQL in WordPress is it better? I don't know. <laughs> maybe yeah. we need to try this one. So yeah, now what we want to do is to display the contents and we will use React for that and GraphQL. So okay, let's go back to the okay. to the GitHub. Um, okay, so this is our post page that has a little bit of love to this page. Um, guess we already create uh, a component a layout for you. It's then, uh, then layout and this, this um, component will have the footer and the header on your everywhere on your website. So let's do it. So that is it's recreating a structure that you usually have with React in general. So the, the, the components, the pages, uh, the footer, like the way you will do it in React is similar in, in Gatsby, which is interesting if you want to use React. Components, <coughs> components, and if we 
go back to the first page. Okay, we have to hit him and just attempt. Okay, so that's good, but. It's too fast for me, I don't know you guys, but it's too fast for me. Do you create the company? You just need to import the component from so the layout component from the component worker at the top of your file. And then um, inside your uh, function, you need to uh, wrap all your content uh, inside the layout component. So like this. This is how you uh, like make it. No, I don't mind this. Okay, so now uh, what we want to do is to uh, use PathQL to implement uh, retrieve all the data. So we first need to import PathQL, so let me set it like we did from the beginning. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just to so, yeah. Import PathQL from Gatsby, like I like said, uh, PathQL come with the uh, uh, Yeah, with, if it's, it's part of Gatsby. And then the query we did in uh, this tool, you can do it exactly the same thing, but the same way in your React uh, components. Okay, so you need to export a query. And this way. So at the bottom, you can put it at the top or at the bottom, it doesn't matter. Just, uh, I used to put it. So yes, this is a query and here we have all posts and we want the title and the contents. Which is exactly what we had before in the GraphQL interface, if you would like on it. It's really a copy paste. So for the moment there is still nothing. So let's now how you uh, yeah how we display the contents inside uh, a component you just need to add all of this code inside your function like this below the data so basically just um, take a look here it's a big array with all your posts so it's a, like a collection of array of, uh, of, of objects sorry So that's why you need to loop through each um, object and display them like this. So we need the title and the content. So both is just my, I mean the name of my variable. And the title is uh, node and title means that we are looking for the dog and title and node and content. So if you save and go back to the post page. Oh, oh. there we go. And we have the content. Yeah, something also really cool with Gatsby is the fact that you have the, the hot reloading. Yeah, you have scope. If you work on the CSS style or even the structure of the page, you will have the layout. Like, uh, <laughs> okay, so. So. So, what we need is just display a post in our post page. So. So that's good. Um, there is a bonus section to answer with how to put menu and uh, widget, but I'm not sure. No. Do you like it or no? Well, super quickly, uh, if you build your page in Gutenberg, and you, you play with the blocks, you do your layout, you move things around in the WordPress admin with Gutenberg and you don't want to build a team you just want to have a page as you see it in the admin using this approach and this stack well, you can actually um, pull the CSS of the blocks in your Gatsby website and when you will display the page that Ben just shows, if it was like a complicated layout with blocks everywhere, we will actually see it the same way that you see it in, in the WordPress admin. So it means that you can create your front and 
from your backend and display that in your static website or dynamic React website, but in this case, thank you. Yeah? And then what happens if somebody updates that page? Does it get automatic or did Yeah, so uh, the question is what, what happens if someone is updating the, the content in WordPress and we have the static website already built? Well, for us, in our case, we have this if we update the website, we'll just run our continuous integration flow that will rebuild the, the Gatsby. So the comment Gatsby developed um, and Gatsby built to actually produce the production that we'll see in one of the last steps, we will trigger on that. But uh, today we also see some options, some plugins also, that you can put directly in WordPress and when you click on publish it will trigger every build in Gatsby there is more and more options like that it depends on what kind of workflow you have and how you manage the deployments and how you manage the code and the versions that you have, staging, production and so on but we will, we will actually um, talk about that, that point Inside the GitHub, you will find everything to how to put content, uh, put content from ICF, links, uh, menu links, and widgets. But we won't, um, we won't do it today because we have other things to show you, actually. And, uh, so yeah, well, depending on the time that we'll have at yeah. the end, maybe we can go back to these sections. Or if you have any questions based on the GitHub, we can go back since we are a bit ahead of time. So. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we are about to let's prepare a production version. So, if so, now that we have this uh, website running on our laptop, well, we don't want to keep that website on the laptop. The goal is really to make it public and, and, and publish the website. And like we said at the beginning, you have really affordable and, and cheap or even free options out there. And that's, a, that's what we will do right now. So make this web page that we have here available online for everybody. Um, yeah, because because it's a, it's a static website generator, you can you, you can create a folder for you, like a public folder where you have all your static files. And in order to do that, you just need to just need to run the command with Get me real sorry. <laughs> so if you do that, it will uh, minify everything and create all pages for you and only HTML files and JavaScript. And again you have the details same as before except that now you have the minification and exactly the task that Caspi is doing to make the website a production website. So it's compiling also the GS6 from React into HTML pages and JavaScript CSS pages. Okay, all done. So once you've done that, you should have this folder inside your project now. And this, this is this folder we that we will want to push to production. So Let's go back to this. So, with the production version, done. Amazing! <laughs> this is the best one. <laughs> uh, like we said, you can use other serverless to push your, um, your production version, like Netlify if you want, but um, because Gatsby use search, we, yeah, we just move with, with search. And we like the logo too. <laughs> um, okay, so let's go back to the GitHub. Okay, so search is free, but if you want to use it, you will have to create an account. 
at the beginning, but first we need to install search like we did with the uh, guest bin. So let's go back to our terminal. And let's install it. Something that we didn't mention also with the WordPress that we use for this uh, example, we didn't change anything special on, on the WordPress. We didn't change the code, we didn't sell plugins, like it's, it's really WordPress, Vanilla WordPress with the REST API enabled and visible, but that's all in case you want to try it. You can also use a WordPress.com website yeah. as long as you have it. Yep. If you have custom post types and custom taxonomy, will it be like will it know, or do you need to install a special plug Gatsby plugin to know like there's custom taxonomies and custom post types? So the question is, um, how do you make custom post types, taxonomies, and, and all that visible to the REST API and, and also to pull this information in, in Gatsby? Um, well, for example, for the navigation and the, the menu and also the widgets, we had to use a, a plugin, which is probably a downside um, of that approach, and that's why we would like to dive into this GraphQL WordPress option to make it easier. And for the taxonomy and uh, custom post type, yeah, for the taxonomy and custom post type, it's a little bit different. You have to do that. Um, from WordPress, you need to, when you create your custom post type, you need to have a few options and set uh, it's, uh, show, show to REST API. Yeah. And you need to set it to true, otherwise, by default, it's not set to true, it's to false. So if you don't do that, you won't be able to uh, retrieve your data from your custom post type. And it's the same with the taxonomy. You will have to add a lot of code inside your GFD or PGS to link your taxonomy to your custom post type. Otherwise, it will be just a bunch of taxonomy, but not related to your post or your content. So yeah, you have to do that from inside the WordPress for the custom post type and the taxonomy inside Gatsby. I uh, can show you maybe after with another project how to do that if you have time. Okay, yeah, so search. Uh, just okay, so. <coughs> If you want to push your public further research, you just need to, from your time uh, of your project, you just need to do the command search precise the folder that you want to push for production. That's what's in there. Okay, you can find it. So it will ask you your email to register. So if you're like testing a website or like confidential information or whatever, like keep in mind that this thing will be public. Was a success. So, so let's try and we have our website. And we just push the website online. Yeah. On search. So, so everybody can you know see the content. Yeah. And we see how page. Yeah, now we have our website. And uh, yeah, this is going to be a quick uh, tonight. Yeah. Yeah, sure. So, um, well, we, we did a lot. Uh, <laughs> and it was it. It's a good thing that it was so fast because we will be able to discuss all the questions that you might have. And uh, yeah, like we did the WordPress, Gatsby, pull the content, 
we saw GraphQL, we saw React, and we published the website online. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so as a as a summary, if if you're interested into that kind of headless or mixed technologies stack, well, how to start? Um, just just look into the documentation. Like yeah, we. It's changing, to be honest, it's changing every month. Like, if, if we use, for example, we decide to go with Gatsby, but Gatsby is changing super fast because it's really popular. Um, the REST API too with WordPress, like we said, you, today you have different options with the um, WordPress Gra GraphQL plugin, so it's changing too, but try to explore maybe what also fits what you have to do and, and if it's for business reason what is exactly the business also your flow like how do you how will you actually update your content update your code so maybe think about all these these parameters and um, and and decide what will be your stack and then like stick to the stack like uh, Sometimes you will have block rounds, but yeah, it's, it's really tough actually to design the full stack that you will use. And then um, maybe one step at a time, try and uh, on the staging or on dev, like see how far you can go. For example, for us it, it was really difficult at the beginning to understand the taxonomies, the, the menus, the widgets, something also as simple as the web based site name. Like this, the name of your site, because we wanted to go as far as we can with the content that we have in WordPress to make this front end as generic as possible. So, if we create pages, if we create navigation, we just want the front end to reflect that. And, and yeah, again, today is changing, you have Gutenberg like, making that much more easier. Maybe two. <laughs> well, the, the interesting point about this approach, like we said at the beginning, cost is so cheap to start. We decided to go with Google Cloud and we only have this blob storage in Google Cloud, like a CDN, and we can increase it to millions of visitors on the website, so it's, it's cheap, it's scalable, it's flexible. And it's also, if, let's say tomorrow, you don't like your provider anymore, it's fine, like you can just easily take anyone, you don't have a full infrastructure to rebuild. That's also an interesting point, because you don't depend on the infrastructure, so backups are easier, uh, migration are easier, if you create a project and you have to ship it to your client, you don't archive, you don't package your WordPress website with HD access, Gold files, like Gold files maybe, but like you don't package your WordPress with a PHP file, you just package the result if you want, if the client wants to work on it, it's a different question, but yeah, it's easier. Security, there is, you don't have any data on the website, like you can change any account to crash your website, go for it, it's a, it's a static website. And, um, if you have forms, if you have dynamic in, um, interactions with your users, you, today you have functions like uh, AWS Lambda functions that allows you to create flows, dynamic flows, create forms. Uh, Netlify also, they have functions on Netlify, so to make some parts of your website dynamic, like a form. Um, performance and scalability, I think. I need to come back to this one. It's, <laughs> it's clear for everyone. And yep. And uh, about the flags, it's because we are using with the stacks uh, a lot of technology like uh, Gatsby, WordPress, CraftQL, ReactJS. It can be confusing at the beginning, and your your name curve can be very long. But um, it, it very exciting at the same time because you learn a lot of things. Very challenging at the beginning, but once you've done something, it's very, uh, very uh, cool and you want to do more and to discover other things and 
to send them try something else in the meantime. But yes, uh, it can be very long, and the, the, uh, you can get lost very easily. But um, with Gatsby, for example, the version one was like the documentation. It was there is no documentation. It was very difficult for us at the beginning to start because we were like, like for the custom post type, it wasn't mentioned anywhere how to do it. We, we need to find by ourselves and to, to, to dig into to our press and get new bugs. The version 2 is way better and its documentation is very complete now and it's way smoother than the version 1. Even, even With PHP for like a WordPress classic stack for uh, I don't know, let's say the f uh, last five or six years. So the classic LAMP stack, and it's an agency context. So you can imagine how difficult it is or it was to say, hey boss, can you do something a bit more funky and build a uh, like a headless uh, JavaScript website? And what was interesting with this approach is we were able to go one step at a time again and to keep this back-end WordPress <coughs> and in the same time build a front-end after all and then show to the boss, hey, we built that, it's scalable, it's secure, it's, it doesn't cost much so that point, to convince your boss point or your clients and also for the team We've been working in PHP for a long time and just the fact to touch a bit of a new technology especially because it's, it's appealing, it's exciting, it's trendy like JavaScript and React and everything you, you can talk about it because you are the one but, but like, it was... Did you like it? Yeah, uh, it was not hard but it, take, it takes time but it took time to push to do React and in the interagency but only PHP WordPress and Drupal, and I really wanted to do some React in the agency and do more stuff, change a little bit. And uh, with the help of Michael, I was able to uh, do this kind of new thing in the office, in the agency. And yes, it's very nice to change, and you can do what you really want to do, and it's, yeah, it's amazing. Right? And, and also to better integrate with WordPress and where WordPress will go tomorrow with the JavaScript integration and the JavaScript switch if we talk about the blocks and the Gutenberg um, vision that we have and Gutenberg is at 10% of the roadmap so who knows what will come tomorrow about JavaScript integration and, and how flexible it will be we don't know if we'll keep a PHP team in, in WordPress in two years because if everything is Gutenberg you have a layout and then that's it everything is in the content <laughs> I talk too much, come on well, well the future, that, that's just what I said and, and also um, jam, jam stacks so yeah, I, you should talk about JavaScript, but I'm just curious, working with clients, if, uh, if all the presentation layer is in the Gatsby preview, right? How do you handle page preview? I mean, the page preview. Like, if I'm in my WordPress, that's the data layer, right? So, if I get page previewing um, WordPress, it's just going to show me what it would look like in WordPress, which isn't what it's going to look like on the site, right? It's kind of through the the Gatsby uh, compilation. So, do you have a strategy for working with clients when they're like, okay, I'm going to make changes in WordPress, how do I know? Can I preview that before it gets compiled? Yeah, exactly. So, the question is, in WordPress, you can preview the content when you're on the administration, but how do you preview this content if the front end is separated from WordPress and if the front end is this website, this JavaScript Gatsby React website? So, 
at this point, with this exam, this specific example, it's a bit difficult. Because if you hit the preview, you will see the preview, let's say, in, in, in the WordPress team, your team. And that's why we are looking more and more into the reduce the gap between um, the front end and back end using Gutenberg. Because you build your layout and the content directly into the, the back end. And your client can almost see what it will look like. And if you hit the preview button, you will see what it looks like. And when you go into the JavaScript front end app, it's the same. So that's why, for us, at least our next step is really to reduce that, that gap. And yeah, and, and see what you will have in your own. Yeah. So the question is, correct me if I'm wrong, but the question is, uh, where is the WordPress website, and where is the content living, right? So it's really up to you. Um, you could have a WordPress.com website and have your content living there, as long as you can pull the content using the REST API. You can have your your own server and uh, with a LAMP stack and then you have your WordPress installed or like a, a pre-built WordPress like if you go on Google Cloud or providers, GoDaddy or other providers, you have this pre-built WordPress option. Or you could also have this WordPress on your machine. Um, I, I don't know if we have WP Engine people in the room but with the WP Engine dev kit uh, of Flywheel, since they are together now, but <laughs> uh, you can have your WordPress running on your machine, you build your content, and then you ship it to the front end. Well, it's probably not the best if you work with multiple people on the website, so that's why we'll go with the two first options self hosted, cloud based, like WordPress.com, or local as a last resort. But, yeah. Gatsby, what happened is 
it was keeping the link, the URL, from the source website. So let's say that it was wcpboston.elab. In Gatsby uh, build, we were seeing that, which was not okay for us because maybe we want to terminate this website, maybe we want to separate them really, maybe we want to bring it to a CDN. So, uh, with the version that we are working on, we had to manipulate, and it's something also really, really interesting in Gatsby, you can manipulate the full um, GraphQL query. And if you want to target, let's say, the images, and the URL of the images, and do a search and replace, well, you can. So, in all case, we search and replace all the staging links with the production CDN. I think today um, there are new options to directly integrate a CDN with Gatsby. Uh, let's say you have Max CDN or any other provider, you can directly implement them on Gatsby. Um, but yeah, it's it's a good point. I think kind of more fundamental you're asking, do you need to make an AJAX call? I'm just looking at what gets yeah, what that's the other. what gets compiled in that public folder. So the stuff that's coming from the REST API, when you do the Gatsby build, it's, it creates essentially a JSON string right here. Right, so, okay. so that's, that's what you're going to push up to your static server. So the, the outcome of the REST API is actually getting compiled into a static file itself. Right? I think he's, he's asking where does the data come from? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm thinking about uh, how can we build this and can you make the static site stand alone without WordPress site being there? But I'm also thinking about security too. Because if you have a URL to a blog published somewhere, hackers are going to be hitting that day and night. And it'd be nice to have a WordPress site somewhere or a static site that hackers can't tell anything about it. Right? Yeah. So, so really the point is about security a bit more than just content and images. Uh, and, and yeah, like the goal is really to separate the contents, to separate the architecture, and uh, how to handle, for example, the, the, the Ajax call. And that's why if you, if you go with this option, maybe you are used to... But if you go with this option, you have to know from the beginning that the, the form that you are creating with the gravity form, for example, well, I don't know today, maybe it's possible, but I don't know if, it's, if you will still be able to use this uh, gravity form in the static, if there is a way to embed, I don't know. And that's why if you go with this option, you have to uh, allocate some time on finding an embed embedded form provider uh, and also implementing this uh, embedded form. I can give you the example of a project that we are working on right now. We have uh, the, the content and the WordPress as a backend and then we'll have this front end static website. So we prepare we are preparing um, in this case lambda functions to handle all the the, the form. So we built the form as an HTML like, static, just HTML and CSS, and then all the data, send, post, verification, any communication that you should have, let's say with a database, if you want to retrieve the list of uh, countries from the United Nations in your form, this has to be dynamic. Or if you want to say to check if your customer is in your database, this is dynamic. In gravity form before or today, we were checking your DB to see if it's actually, for example, a WP user or a user on the DB. But if you use this, it's in the Lambda function or in any embedded function that you will have to do it. And when you have a form, you put the name, your name, you have to check like with a, a GS trigger, you go back in your database. Let's say you have MailChimp. You will go back in MailChimp and see if it's an existing user. Same if you send this form, if you use 
I don't know if I can draw names like that, but <laughs> if you use any form provider and that like um, Cloud Form, Southern Monkey, any any provider that has a good API and embedded form, that's what you do. And for us, we had to do this switch and to stop using Gravity Form. Not that it's bad, but <laughs> just because of all the regulations going on right now, you have the GDPR, you have the Castle in Canada, you have the California law about data, but it's also tough. So we wanted to separate the consoles because at some point we're just not able to tell our clients, yeah, we will build a website and everything will be contained in your website and you will go in the back end and see your customers. We cannot do that, like it's too risky on the security stack. So that's why we had to separate. I don't know if it and so many questions. Yeah? Uh, I guess both Fairman and C. I guess Sorry? Fairman and C watch for Ajax calls. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure this. Yeah. I've heard that that's like Netlify, like that's one of the services they provide, right? Like forms that can be embedded in a jam stack style. So if you're, if you're going this route, you might look for a service like Netlify specifically that's part of the service Yeah, and it's, it's also difficult to choose again. It's, it's an additional choice that you would have to do, like, because, yes, if you go with Netlify and then they'll say, oh, we have an embedded form, but will it fit what you had before, how much does it cost, and everything, so, yeah, it's an additional thing to look into, but, but these are concerns that you will remove from before. Like when you were in, in Gravity Form and you had the, this, uh, or your WordPress, and you had to send the information to a CRM or MailChimp, you had the same concerns. The only thing today is it's a change, it's a shift. And yeah, depends on the time you start. I'll make it quick. Uh, so, for in your example, your stack environment and the decisions you made, I'm still trying to wrap my head around um, the hook that you have or the process that you have that's still allowing the content living in the database to then be displayed through the static implementation. Is there is that part of what this demo is also showing? And if so, what is that hook that? that talks that data from your WordPress into your static JS implementation. So you mean the question is how we bring the data from the WordPress to the static? Yes, to, conti to continue to display the newer content that is done after the build. When you have updates, for example, when you create a new post and then you have an update, how does it go to the static? That's your question? Yes, update yeah, to your yeah. posts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, just, this is uh -huh. all new concepts for uh -huh. me. Yeah. Uh, well, you have new plugins. Uh, actually, I will go to one of the last slides there. Well, easier. So, actually, one of the last comments was about Jamstack integration. So, okay. it's a really good question to introduce that. Um, if you are concerned about that, or if you are curious about it, you have this. So it's a lot of links. <laughs> so the most important ones are the two here for the slides and the the GitHub. Um, but if you are wondering how to update and keep your stay content linked and up to date with uh, WordPress, well, you have two options. Let's say that you have your WordPress here. Um, I mean, the basic answer is, is the Gatsby build, right? It's, 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 the, the, it's the Gatsby build. Yeah. 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 So yeah. when you type Gatsby build, that's the thing that generates the new static content. So yeah. if you have a script that says Gatsby, Gatsby build and then search deploy. So that script is, according to your environment, that, that, that's kind of the That's the publisher. That's what's going to link that data to right. continually be built and deliver a static, your static, yeah, secure. Exactly. That's what I, that's yeah. what I was asking. Thank yeah. you.
Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get that concept. Yeah, yeah. And the, the script will do the job to pull the, the content again and it will build the static content. And after that, it's up to you to decide how you want to trigger this build. Like we said earlier, it can be automated workflow or it can be like manual workflow when you click and you want to update the website, which is a good thing if you don't want to publish right away. Or you can use a plugin that allows you when you post or update to re trigger this uh, script and, uh, and ship. The, the new version of the site. Are these essentially bash scripts or they're completely, they're not bash scripts in essence, they're completely no. different. No, there are no JS. No, they're yeah. no JS. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, my question is, what's the advantage of using Gatsby, which is a static site generator, that every time you have new posts, you need to re-update and redo your uh, Gatsby build compared to Next.js or React, which are like more dynamic. Um, so you don't have, like it's not this React and uh, Next are not, are Fuji or Fuji.js, but they're not like static site generator. What for you, what are the advantages of using like React or Next and compared to Gatsby? Well, I will tell you a secret. One of the website that we built is, I think, one ton uh, static, or, like flat uh, HTML, one turned next.js dynamic and one turned uh, Gatsby results. So we've been able to compare like, <laughs> what is the, the, the advantage and, uh, and the simple answer is the complexity of the production server. Even if today you have more and more uh, provider that allows you to just deploy your your React or your Dynamic GS website, but then you still have to deal with the complete uh, completion, uh, building the app, and making the app running, and you still depend on the server at some point. Like even if it's a really really small server, you depend on that. So we just want to remove all the dependencies that we can have and end up with something that is super fast to update. Like when we update, actually when we trigger this, this uh, deploy and build, it takes like one minute. Yeah, it's, it's super fast. Like we, we click, it builds, it ships, and it's live. So we remove all the pain that we had at the end on the production server. And yeah, like. I don't know if you want to say something about next year's or uh, why why it was pushing pushing. Um, we try, yeah, like I said, we tried next year's and when we want to use, like when, when we are going to use next year's, it's because we we need to play with the database. You can do that with Gatsby, um, because it's a static website. But with next year's, we need one more to push data to database, to retrieve data to database, update database. And with Next.js you can do that because you can update your server, not your not server directly with Next.js. It's very, you can do it with Gatsby, but it's way more complicated than in um, Next very simple. And if you know how to do it with, with uh, Next.js, you can play with that. But yeah, when it's just uh, like no other, no, um, Yeah, no interaction between your database, we we'll go with Gatsby for sure, but if we need to play and talk to the database, we will use the next yes. But both are very cool and I love it, yes, but according to the, to the, yes, according to the need, we will choose one or another. Okay. Yeah. Very great. I know this would be a whole talk on its own, I'm sure, but for those of us who already have a WordPress site, it's already like, like doing this sounds amazing. I want to move in a static direction, but I can't build React components for all the different pages of the site. Like, is there a, is there? Do you know of some type of a good resource to go to for how to make that migration, how to begin that process? Can Gatsby pull down a copy? Like, what would be your recommendation for that? Yeah, it's a it's a good one. I don't know if you 
practical. And, you know, like if you have an existing project, how do you move to that, basically? And uh, well, you you also have one press plugin that can statify, statify you know, in website. <laughs> I know that people are using that for production website and big websites. We will actually try one for a specific client soon. We'll see. <laughs> come, I can come back to you about that. But if you want to go with that direction, and maybe the GraphQL plugin is a battle step to do the migration and, and prepare the website, I don't know. But for us, like we, we had existing content. We actually started to form an existing website. And before we migrate it completely, we just want to make sure we are able to pull all the pieces. So, yeah, one step at a time. Can you can you pull the the post, the page, and it was pretty easy actually. Like except the ramp up, the technical ramp up on the on Gatsby or the stack or the more the continuous integration and deployment that we had to figure out. Pulling the content was was okay. And, Especially today, where you have more options and resources about that, I mean, we can we can chat about it after. I think if, maybe for everybody, or maybe to go on with your answer, like when you're doing headless project with WordPress, like the back end is the back end. Every plugin plugin that interferes with the front end, you cut it out. It's it's not. You have to build your own front end, like start from scratch. So it's really like you're cutting yourself. And it's really, there's powers to it, and there's like disadvantages of going that way. So you always, depending on your needs or on different projects, you got to find out a way, what's the best for my project to go in. Because there's a lot of trade-offs, because all the front-end plugins. So if you have a client that needs all the, those different front-end plugins, it's probably not the best, because you'll start from scratch. But it's, really, it's a big website, and you need a really fast and, and like new kind of UI. It's probably the best way to go with React or Gatsby or any of those new tools. Yeah, the decision about your stack will really depend on your business needs and, and the client and, and, and yourself, where you're comfortable with it. And also, it's it's a ramp up. Like it's, it's a big change, a big change in the approach itself. But then once you get it, it becomes really, really interesting. And also for the client, like we said, with the Gutenberg switch, it's pretty seamless. Other questions?